And uh, the woman said, square dance is a copyrighted term by sets in order. We were out outdoors in the summertime. Uh, we were dancing on the sidewalk, and a caller's wife had been watching us. She came up and says, "Oh no, you can't, you can't do this." First, first of all, she says, "You can't do this." Let me see your your official uh, Square Dance membership card. What what organization are you part of? You know that kind of thing. And I I'm just a guy. We're we're just people. We just we just play instruments. We just like this. And she says, "Oh, well, you can't do that. You can't do that here. You're 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 given a bad name." To square dance, we've we've been working since 1940 to establish to get this out of the out of the overalls and the banjos. We don't want live music. We we have professional we have professionally made you know karaoke tapes or whatever whatever you know. You can't do this first. And then when we said yes, we will. I'll do this. It's not the same thing. Then she said, well, you can't use the name square dance. You can't do you can we. We we're square, squareness is a specific thing, and, and you don't you're not part of it. And, and I knew that was that, that was a warning. You know that was that they were. She was a caller's wife. He was official, and so that made her official. She was a spokesperson for, you know, out of California, I guess, because all that stuff comes out of L.A. When Fred Field was. Perhaps at his steepest, uh, rapidest phase of learning, his rapidest phase of learning, at his most voracious in learning, uh, I think was perhaps when he had uh, moved uh, to Boston for a while and more or less stumbled on the contradance scene in Boston. And he attended a dance at a YMCA building in Cambridge, a contra dance, I think it was probably 20 Salatans contra dance, in which <clears throat> climbing up the stairs to the room that that dance was in, he passed another event where uh, some uh, other countercultural people, <laughs> more hippie-like countercultural people, were holding uh, something that they call the joy of movement, Movement Center, and uh, they were gyrating the music in some way. And uh, after having passed this Joy of Movement Center a few times, I think two things stuck with Fred. Uh, one was the idea of the joy of just moving the music. It was not always obvious in the somewhat competitive and perhaps a little snooty contra dance scene in Boston and Cambridge their environments, the places where they won't dance with you if they don't know you, don't dance with a stranger. So uh, when Fred Field decided he wanted to have an organization and not just me and uh, my hand-scrawled poster taped to a lamppost in Uptown, uh, he wanted a name for his organization. And the first thing that came to mind was Joy of Movement, and he called it the Joy of Movement. And uh, this really opened the door for me to stick my foot in the door. This was my wedge, my first successful wedge issue. Right? You can't do that. That's plagiarism. And you can't do that because it's non-descriptive. It's not, it's not correctly. It's too generic. It's not specifically descriptive enough. Joy of movement means that uh, you just like getting out of bed in the morning. It doesn't it doesn't imply anything about what it is you're actually doing except having fun moving. Uh, it's got to be more specific. Uh, having fun moving to traditional music, uh, using traditional forms. It's got to have some type of hint, at least, of that. Uh, I wasn't going to use square dance, mm -hmm. so. But I did want dance in there, and so I was. I, I rode the buses a lot, and as I was riding the bus, I would notice uh, business names. I would notice advertisements, and I would notice business names on buildings. 
Chicago Fastener Company, Chicago uh, Pizza Company, uh, Chicago Hardware Company. And so he came up with the Chicago Bar Dance Company. I think very wisely, it was based on several things that were in his head that uh, got uh, jammed together. It was typical of the names of uh, entertainment establishments in the parts of Chicago where he and I lived and worked. Uh, the Chicago Pizza and Oven Grinders, the drinking comp- the Chicago Drinking Company. That's where the Chicago part of it, the idea and the company part. Some Chicago dance company of some kind, I, I kind of settled on. I mean, I was thinking of other things, too. Uh, there were fiddle tunes that were called, uh, like, Seneca Mountain Barn Dance. And, uh, you know, there were square dance albums with, with uh, traditional square dancing in them, uh, recording that would have the title of the album was, you know, so-and-so's barn dance. And so I kind of put those, the, the album names together with this idea of Chicago such and so company. And, uh, and I, I settled on barn dance as a substitute for square dance. And in particular, barn dance as an alternative to square dance, because the term square dance is highly suggestive of the modern Western square dance movement. And in the minds of anyone who saw one of Fred Fields' ads or heard of it, square dance might conjure up something they already dislike. They already are prejudiced. They already they have a. They might conjure a prejudice. Might, might tap into a prejudice about dancing. He was trying not to do that. The idea of joy of movement was to avoid tapping into a prejudice. Avoid that prejudice. And the prejudice is that uh, it's uh, just a lot of boring old people with many layers of crinoline um, marching in close order drill to background music. Just record it. 